The New Yorker isn't the bedrock, it's the Everest. The cartoons had partly made the New Yorker what it was. Who are you as a cartoonist? Are you observational? Scales say alien overlord, but the rolled up sleeves say man of the people. Are you absurdist? What's your true sort of nature? I, like most cartoonists, have my head wired weirdly. One time I asked my son, who wasn't quite three, I asked him what he thought I did for a living. And he said, you go on the train and you show your drawings to the men. And I thought, well, that kind of sums it up. Sometimes I come up with a god awful stuff. What, why is it a bunny? And sometimes I come up with something that clothes. <laughs> Doing cartoon is like sticking a note in a bottle and throwing it into the ocean. It may reach somebody, but you'll never know. These are the actual scrapbooks where all the cartoons are. So this is this whole history, the, all these generations. You know, come the apocalypse, this will still be here. When I became cartoon editor, I realized that, you know, this was a plane that was going to run out of fuel. When I started selling cartoons, there were still a number of magazines that one could sell to. And now suddenly here we are, all of these years later, and a lot of magazines have really bitten the dust. Unless we interceded, this was going to be the last generation of cartoonists to do this. The one thing I made it an open call. So now it is open. All you have to do is call and say, I want to show you my cartoons. Who's this, a little cat? It's a cat in a suit. Okay, what are we looking at? Sumors, because they're sumos. If you can't take rejection, you can't be a cartoonist. It's kind of frustrating to think you have really good stuff and you he's looking through it, but meanwhile there's about a foot high stack of cartoons on the desk. You actually have to have a certain amount of arrogance saying, that stuff's not so good. It's sort of a lot to process, or else you're not gonna get anywhere. This is my fourth time here and he's never taken any before. <laughs> Most of the time, we're by ourselves, in our own heads, trying to think and trying to draw. There's a sense when we come together that we're all in it together. When Bob uh, hired me, he said, I like you because you seem like you're not trying to get ahead. And then I looked at my resume and I was like, yeah, I guess that's right. So how's the caption kind of going? It's good. I, I was whittling down the same joke so uh, let's see, over here we're at 157. We want to get down to about 50. That's always interested me, that some of these marks that I make on paper outlast you. And yet the little pencil mark has the, the, the spontaneity that life has. The boom, look at this. You gotta hold that all the time. Shouldn't you be able to operate this like a drone from your home?